Welcome, Commander, to Goldfish on Games, where we're celebrating the end of the war with the cats. No, not those cats, the ones that gave their name to this collection, the Kilrathi Saga. This is the compilation of Blair's fight against the feline foe, and was released in 1996 containing the first three games updated to run on the still new Windows 95. This brought a number of pros, but also a few cons, as we'll see. In the very full box, we get the game across five CDs. With the first CD having the complete first two games, as well as the installer for the third, with the rest of the CDs being used to hold the over two hours of videos required for the third game. And can we take a moment to appreciate how good these cases and these CDs actually are? As if we take a look at the spines, on one side we have the Korathi Saga logo spread across them, and on the other it's the image from the front of the box. And each CD has its own Korathi Ace printed on the front of it. It just looks absolutely amazing. There is also this lovely spiral bound manual, though most versions including my original had more basic binding. But the content is the same and did its best to condense three games worth of manuals and world building into a single book. And it goes into great detail about the various games and covers the changes that each game introduced as they came along. There was also a few other booklets in the box, including the installation guide, which to be honest was mostly unnecessary as the game installed pretty easily and ran pretty much flawlessly, at least in my experience. There was even this reference card that listed all the keyboard, mouse and joystick commands across all three games and made it easy to tell which was for which. It is a shame that we didn't get the wonderful blueprints that came with the original, but they are less needed for this version. The first jewel case also contained a small booklet that gave you the basics of how to get going. On top of that there was also a calendar for 1997 or 2673 so I'm set in over 650 years. Being a Wing Commander game, it had to be a multimedia experience, even in the installer. With this great little intro that managed to look even better than the film that was released two years later. From this menu we get to install and launch any of the three games, and with the power of the CD-ROM drive they all install pretty quickly, and you're ready to go in just a few seconds. So we can be in Wing Commander in less time than it took the intro to play. And if you're eagle-eyed, you might have noticed something is missing. The copy protection that had you entering specs from the blueprints is gone. This time it's straight to the game, and there's a few things to note here. One is the updated music, which is based on the original audio, but sounds so much better than it did before. The other is that the frame rate and gameplay are no longer tied together, so even if you're playing this on a Pentium 1 200, the game isn't whizzing past like the flash on speed. This is one of the huge pros to this version, as if I tried to play the DOS version on this machine, well why don't I show you and let you guess which version is which.
The game by default will set your name to Blair and your call sign to Maverick to match the third game, but you can still change it to anything you want. The Tiger's Claw is still as cool as it was back then, with all the various people to talk to, and while the game plays nice and smoothly, there are a few downsides. The first is that there is a bug in some of the music that will result in the wrong track from playing or the track not ending correctly and just playing forever. And the other is that the backgrounds got messed up, and as you can see, it's missing some of the planets and other items that we would normally see in the original release. So while this is an absolutely amazing way to play the game, it's not perfect. Wing Commander 2 is very much like 1, in that it's a direct port of the DOS release. And while the gameplay is as nice and smooth as we've come to expect from the first game, the animations for the cutscenes seem to have a few issues, and as we can see their frame rate seems to fluctuate all over the place. But this was also true of the original DOS release. And awesomely, you can still import your save game from the first game when you start, and this will accept both the DOS as well as the Karathi Saga save games, which is a very nice touch. It is a bit of a pity they weren't able to fix up those cutscenes, because it would have been great if they played as smoothly as the game, but that's really the only downside to this port. It is very solid and very well done. Both of the game's input code were updated to support Windows joysticks, so you have the option of using a classic game port stick, or even one of those new fangled USB ones. And with that you can even use one of those crazy Hortas sticks, but you will be limited to using just a single device, which will restrict some setups. On top of that there's now a key combo to completely remove the cockpit so you can see everything, which is something they had already added to Wing Commander 3. And finally, there's an option in the launcher to enable invincibility mode, but think twice before enabling it, as it will rename your call sign to Cheetah. While the CD did include the voice packs for Wing Commander 2, negligence. But I know the destruction of the Tiger's Claw was your fault. It didn't have the covert ops or secret missions for either game. Those were released for free on Origin's website at the time, and these days you can find the files on the Wing Commander CIC website. Even the third game was updated to run under Windows, and received probably the least amount of changes of all of them. They did make some changes to the video decoder, so it would smooth out the videos, so they didn't have to have all those thick black lines, as well as adding support for Windows joysticks and rudders. But as the game didn't have quite the same level of issues as the original two, it required less work to get running. The game itself runs really well, and really it just gives us one less reason to boot into DOS. And if you wanted to continue Blair's story under Windows, they even included a patch for Wing Commander 4 that updated it to the same Windows engine they used for 3. And it shared all the same benefits such as rudder support and improved video quality. I know you've always wanted to take a shot at me, so here's your chance. Our gun's power generators have been temporarily altered to fire non-lethal blasts. Your HUD will show virtual damage... There is no denying this is a great celebration of the first three Wing Commander games, but it does feel a bit of a missed opportunity, as it only included patched up versions of the DOS games. 
And while I don't think the world needed to re-experience the 16 color, 5 frames a second gameplay of the Amiga 500 version that I grew up on, it would have been nice to have the option of using the voices they added to the Mega CD version. Belly on up, friend, and take a load off. You must be hot shot. I'm shot glass. Welcome aboard the claw. Or even have been able to play Super Wing Commander that was released a few years beforehand on the 3DO. That not only managed to fit in completely redone artwork, but also added brand new full speech to the game as well. What is the point, Monsieur? There is one, we? I was leading up to it last. If those emissions don't put you off, then you can play this collection on modern Windows. But it will take a bit of work, as this was based on one of the earliest versions of DirectX. Thankfully, there are two projects that will make this easier. There is DD Hack, which is a replacement DLL for Direct Draw and works with all four updated Xyz, and even includes a few additional filters that can make the game look a little better, if that's your thing, and has even been shown to work on other direct draw based games. The other is called Wing Commander DX, and is directly patching the game to remove the old rendering code and replace it with DirectX 9, and in doing so has been able to fix some of the issues with the ports, like the missing backgrounds, but currently it's only fully working with Wing Commander 1 and has an initial release for the second game. Three and four are still a long way off. This even included a fix for the music issues, which can be applied on its own. When I found this collection back in the day, it really was amazing, as up until that point I'd only enjoyed the game at five frames a second, and that's because all I had was the Amiga 500 Plus version. So it really is a bit of a pity that this got such a limited release as it really is a great way to experience those original DOS games in a more friendly environment. And until next time, I was the Goldfish, those were some kitties that needed fragging, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching my video, I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please consider helping the channel with its cat menace by liking, subscribing, or even sharing the video. Or you can check your flight recorder as there should be two kills ready for you on screen right now for you to check out.